Well, Patrick, it's been another a good run for this day. But let's start with a horse called Maureen. Great name, great pedigree and great debut performance. Yeah, um, look, James Fenton has a, has a release off um, the Magnus and uh, they obviously bred her. And um, yeah, she, she came back, she came in here kind of last late last spring and we had her for a couple of weeks and we just said she's probably too big a mare to be running in the summer anyway. Um, so we, we put her away to grass and um, brought her back in the autumn. And um, she was obviously in pre-training for a while. She came to us then maybe to eight or ten weeks ago um, and we'd had her way just good racing nice and she'd gone nicely without wowing us um, and she'd worked well in the Curra again nicely without wow- wowing us um, so what she did on the track in Punchestown um, was, a, was a pleasant surprise we thought she might the manner she did um, it's very exciting for everyone involved and you mentioned afterwards would you be thinking like the big mare's bumpers for her moving forward would, would that be the sort of spring targets that you'd have in mind Look, I think we'll we'll look at all the all the the good bumpers in the spring. Um, you know all the all the major festivals. Um, on a performance like that, uh, she is entitled to take her chance in any bumper. But um, uh, obviously there's a great program for those mares there as well. Um, but you know there's plenty of mares born in Cheltenham, uh, the likes of Fiona and Relegate. Um, so that's an option as well. Um, but you know we'll see. We'll we're not going to rush to any any um decisions just yet but she has to be in the mix for for all those bumpers yeah Patrick, talking to great pedigrees they don't come better than mystical powers he's really living up to that now you and the bumper on him what, what did you make of that performance in winning the sky bet moscow flyer at the weekend yeah look it was another pleasant surprise we thought uh, he might win but to win in the manner he did did was uh, very pleasing um look he's been a very slow burn um you know it took a while for the penny from the drop when he was here last spring we only got him out in May time, um, and he just won. He wasn't hugely impressive. Um, obviously, he improved then to go win a Galway, but what he did in Punchdown was a whole different kettle of fish. So he's improving with every run. Um, so who's to know where he'll stop? Who's to say he won't improve again? His jumping probably does need to sharpen up a little bit, um, but he has done plenty of it with Ender Boulder before he came to us, so maybe that's just going to be his style of jumping. Um, and, you know, obviously being out of any power, Makes him very special around here. Uh, Sergi, who led him up on on Sunday, um, used to look after Annie Power, so that's a nice link there. And yeah, look, he's he's favoured for Supreme now, uh, I'm told. So, you know, if he could go and um, if Annie Power under, with her first foal could could sire a Cheltenham winner, um, you know, how special would that be? Be some story. We got the Lawlers of Nace run um, on Friday as well. One two for the stable. You rode in the race, reading Tommy Wrong and Daryl Jacob picked up Eel Antique late to win the race. Did you think it did ride like a good race? What do you make of the principles? Yeah, look, it was an interesting race. Uh, we we went hard over the first two. Um, six was lined up in a line and reading Tom Wrong was the horse that sat out the back and maybe, you know, those first two furlongs helped him in the last furlong. Um, Chapo de Soleil's jumping, just he lost his confidence early. Um, but I thought that after that, Il Antique got to set his own fractions in front. Um, you know, I think I thought he pretty much got the run of the race, jumped well by one mistake. Um, but you could see every time Daryl gave Reed and Tommy Wrong a little squeeze, you know, he jumped up into the bridle. He's a horse at home that only does the bare minimum. Um, you know, he's only doing enough. But every time Daryl gave him a squeeze, he was hard in the bridle. And Daryl gave him a beautiful ride. He just tracked Paul down to midway between the last two pulled him out, winged the last, and got up in the last 100 yards. Um, they pulled a long way clear of two good horses, Lecky Watson and Firefox. Uh, so the form looks rock solid. I mean, there was no no-hopers in the race. And, um, yeah, look, I suppose the, the, the question mark is whether perhaps reading Tommy Wrong being dropped out over the first two furlongs, you know, was that what helped them overturn Il Antique late in the race? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't like to say that was definitely the case. Um, but if there was a rematch between the two of them, it would certainly be very interesting. The line on Blood Destiny, he lost his unbeaten record over fences, but I'd imagine for the first two miles, two furlongs of that race, you liked everything you saw. Yeah, yeah, he, he didn't jump fantastically well early on, but he warmed up into it and got into a rhythm. Um, and we might just have been beaten by a very good horse. I think Spillane Sauer um, looks very good. And actually, if you go back to the herd race and punch down with Uncle Phil and... Imagine and Spillane Sauer, um, they might have ran kind of again to a similar level of form. So, you know, uh, it's not easy for Blue Destiny being a, 
uh, you know, a five-year-old taking on older horses. But I think he ran with credit. Um, but the winner just might be a bit special.